so in today's uh, session we'll talk about knowledge representation uh, and how uh, and what actually is this knowledge representation why we should uh, go for knowledge representation with respect to your uh, intelligent machines development and also uh, with respect to your artificial intelligence so as already discussed uh, most of the contents uh, in artificial intelligence relies on your logic and that's what that's the reason we have learned about logic programming and the logic concepts in the previous session and now we will try to understand it uh, with respect to how those logic can be converted into your knowledge and if you want to represent uh, if you want to uh, make a machine or an intelligent uh, system understand how a knowledge need to be uh, transferred or converted using your different logical concepts we need to learn about this knowledge representation okay so uh, we will first try to understand what actually is this knowledge representation and how a human being and how a intelligent machine are different with respect to this uh, knowledge representation because basically as a human being human being we will be uh, we will have a brain and we will try to uh, understand things and try to represent things according to the scenario what you are facing in the same manner an intelligent machine also need to equip with the knowledge of what to be done according to the query being asked according to the situation or, or the scenario what is happening a machine need to react in the same manner okay yeah so humans are best at understanding uh, reasoning and interpreting the knowledge because we are having a, a machine in our uh, brain uh, in our body that is your brain it will try to uh, feed the knowledge from the scenarios what is happening and accordingly we will try to react so now the goal is we need to train our machine or the intelligent system in the same manner how a human being will react to these situations yeah so human uh, knows things as per the knowledge they perform various actions in the real world so exactly right uh, according to the knowledge whatever you have uh, you have gained in the previous uh, from the previous uh, task we will be trying to react in the same manner in the same manner an intelligent machine also need to react in the same manner according to how a human being performs his task from the knowledge what he have gained so the question here is how machines do all these things comes under knowledge representation and reasoning so we need to train a machine with respect to some algorithm or model that how a knowledge need to be understood from the previously allocated task right so that is what is the concept of artificial intelligence in real world it will try to learn from the previous uh, task and it will try to react according to the previously loaded data and as per the inputs of the uh, person or the person who is uh, operating that machine uh, that will be giving you some solutions it can be a problem solving it can be some reasoning so anything uh, it needs some prior knowledge base that then only that can give you some solutions okay that is what we are discussing in uh, current concept that is knowledge representation so with respect to knowledge representation what are the different concepts we need to learn uh, uh, if you want to train your uh, intelligent machine with various types of knowledge okay yeah so uh, talking in depth about your knowledge representation yeah so it is reasonable or uh, responsible for representing information about the real world so that a computer can understand and can utilize this knowledge in problem solving it can be a real world problem it can be a complex problem it can be a simple problem so a system or it, here a computer indicates an intelligent system need to get in some knowledge on the previously uh, happened things and also about the different different types of logical questions with respect to logical concepts such as uh, i can give you one uh, one uh, one example like of one uh, already we have discussed about lot of applications of your artificial intelligence so if i talk about uh, health sector uh, in so diagnosing a medical condition so suppose if i say uh, suppose that as i am i am having some disease and i am unable to uh, go to some uh, doctor specialist i need some intelligent machine which can give me some guidance or uh, some tips for me to make myself healthier so uh, assume that i have there is some some uh, uh, intelligent machine uh, algorithm machine learning algorithm which is being uh, developed which can give you some suggestions according to the symptoms of your disease suppose if i say uh, i am having temperature of uh, 103 or 104 and i am suffering from uh, cold and fever all those things 
it need to take all the inputs of user and it need to give you some uh, suggestions like what can be done for making your health better or it can be any anything it can be um, reducing your body weight or uh, regular exercises all these things can be trained as the knowledge which a machine need to have if it want to diagnose your medical condition so that's how uh, a person who is developing an algorithm or an intelligent machine he need to feed a lot of knowledge or it need to give a proper reasoning for the knowledge accordingly how humans react in the same manner if that can be done even an intelligent machine also will try to do in the same manner that's what uh, is the first point saying here yeah so uh, a knowledge representation is not just storing data into some database it also enables an intelligent machine to learn from the knowledge and experiences so that it can behave intelligently like a human that's what i am trying to say guys uh, you need uh, you need to understand that it's not every time we need to give some input to your machine so a machine need to understand from the scenarios just like a human being that is the actual task of uh, artificial intelligence that is the exact theme of this artificial intelligence so according to the inputs given by the a user or a person who is developing an algorithm it need to store all those contents and every time a scenario coming across a uh, intelligent machine regarding the same task it need to analyze from the previous concepts or the previous topics and accordingly it need to react just like how a human being does so it it need to learn from the past experiences it need to get a knowledge from the previous previously happened task and accordingly it need to react that is the actual actual uh, theme of artificial intelligence and that is what we need to discuss as part of your knowledge representation so how a knowledge can be gained by a machine with respect to that how what are the important things we need to uh, make a machine understand then all the things are possible okay yeah so following are uh, some of the kinds of knowledge which need to be represented uh, for an intelligent machine so if you want to develop a uh, A AI machine or an AI intelligent system. You need to uh, make a machine understand with respect to some of the uh, points discussed here. Uh, first one is object. Yeah. So uh, objects are the basic entities uh, in real world, right? So uh, accordingly, uh, if I want to train a machine learning algorithm with respect to some medical diagnosis, it need to understand everything with respect to medical diagnosis clearly. All the objects which are linked to that diagnosis. it can be tablets it can be any injections so anything which can diagnose a human being or with respect to some temperature so all these things need to be very clear with respect to that intelligent machine so uh, coming to your first point here that is object all the facts about objects in our uh, world domain so it it is not only about that particular uh, element all the objects related to the world need to be understood by an intelligent machine for example here are talking about guitar a guitar consists of strings trumpets and brass instruments so it need to be uh, it need to be aware of all the different elements with respect to object clearly then only it will train properly and it will try to react according to the questions being asked by the user that's how uh, there are some more uh, different different things what an intelligent machine need to have uh, uh, for the proper knowledge base and next one is events so events are the actions which occur in our real world the scenarios what we face in our real world the same things uh, will be as part of the queries being asked okay yeah so next one uh, it's about performance so performance uh, it describes the behavior which involves knowledge about how to do things so uh, once the uh, once a machine is uh, uh, clear with the objects and the different types of events it need to now understand the behavior which involves knowledge about how to uh, do the things how to do the works parallelly that's what is about your performance and next one is about meta knowledge so when i talk about this word called as meta knowledge or meta data it's about if i say it is meta data it's data about data so that is called as meta data in the same manner if i talk about meta knowledge it is knowledge about what we know so what we know previously that is called as your meta knowledge that that should be useful for the upcoming uh, phases of knowledge representation next one is facts which we already discussed as part of your logic uh, programming 
facts are the truths uh, about the real world and what we represent. They are also called as axioms, uh, which is a universal truth. That those are called as your facts. Facts need to be followed as is, which which represents the truth in the real world entities. So combining all these things, we call uh, everything as a knowledge base. The central component of knowledge based agent is knowledge base. So how a knowledge base will be uh, equipped with all the scenarios around and what are the different different things an AI need to go through if it wants to build some knowledge. So these are the, some important points about your knowledge representation. What an intelligent machine need to understand if it uh, if it want to give some results in the next scenarios. Okay, yeah. So uh, this is uh, something important about your knowledge representation. That is types of knowledge. So basically, knowledge is an awareness or familiarity gained by experiences of facts, data, situations, uh, whatever the things we have discussed here, meta knowledge, events, objects. So everything uh, collectively we call them as knowledge. So there are different types of knowledge as seen in the uh, picture here. So knowledge can be of five different types. One is declarative knowledge, which talks about object facts. Next one is structural knowledge. It talks about relationships between object and the concept. Next one is procedural uh, knowledge. It talks about rules, uh, uh, procedures, and facts, a uh, 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 combination of different different types of rules, relationship between rules, uh, rules and the objects. These all things uh, will be talked with respect to your procedural language. So next one is meta knowledge. As I said, it's knowledge about knowledge. That's also like uh, gaining uh, information from the previous experiences. Next one is heuristic knowledge. It talks about thumb rules, like which need to be followed from the uh, previously given statements as it is. That's called as your thumb rules with respect to your heuristic knowledge. So everybody need to keep these uh, five things, uh, five different types of knowledge uh, in your mind while answering the questions about your knowledge representation. Now let's quickly uh, talk about different types of knowledges, how uh, and what are the different things comes under these types of knowledge. Yeah, so talking uh, first about declarative language. So we have talked about this declarative language as part of your logic programming and logic concept with respect to prologue language, where prologue language is also a declarative language. Yeah. So a declarative language is to know about something. It will just try to understand from uh, about some given types of uh, objects or facts or rules. That's what we call as uh, something here. Something indicates it can be uh, with respect to some atoms, uh, rules, facts, all these things. So it includes yeah concepts, facts, and objects. So basically, a declarative uh, language includes all these things like what are the facts, what are the rules? What are the objects with respect to the given scenario? And what are the concepts? Yeah. So uh, it is also called as descriptive knowledge and expressed in declarative sentences. That is what we have seen in the previous sessions. Even the uh, quiz held previously, we have seen some statements are given, that declarative sentences are given. And then when a query is being asked, it needs to say whether it is a truth or false. That's how. We'll try to give some queries and get some answers with respect to your declarative language. Yeah, so it is much simpler than uh, the procedural language, which we'll discuss now. So uh, that's all about your declarative language. The best example what we can give uh, with respect to declarative language is the uh, prologue language, what we have learned in the previous sessions. OK, yeah. So the next one is uh, procedural language. So it's also known as imperative uh, knowledge. Uh, so the procedural knowledge is a type of knowledge which is responsible for knowing how to do something. So uh, in declarative language, we we already know something uh, about about some different types of things, and we are trying to query according to them. And here, uh, when I talk about procedural language, it talks about how to do some uh, something. It can be a querying or it can be anything. We hear the question raises like how something can be done. It can be directly applied to any task. So a procedural language can be uh, adapted to any type of task. Any type of uh, questions can be answered with respect to your procedural knowledge. So uh, here it includes uh, rules, strategies, procedures, agendas, etc. 
so this uh, these things need to be kept in your mind guys like uh, what are the uh, different different things uh, which each knowledge includes when i talked about uh, definitive language uh, it it includes about facts uh, and objects so when i talks about uh, procedural language it includes rules strategies procedures agendas etc yeah so uh, a procedural knowledge depends on the task on which it can be applied as i said uh, in the previous point how something can be uh, done with respect to procedural language it depends on the task on which it can be applied so according to the situation or according to the task whatever it is having it will try to uh, react accordingly and it will try to give solutions with respect to the task allocated that's about your procedural knowledge next one is about your meta knowledge that is about knowledge about some previously having a uh, known knowledge knowledge about the other types of knowledge is known as your meta knowledge so while learning about knowledge uh, in the upcoming sessions we will try to uh, go deep into these concepts so as of now uh, we are just having an overview on what actually is this uh, different types of knowledge how this can be useful in your uh, development of intelligent systems so yeah our uh, next one is about heuristic knowledge it's about thumb rules what we uh, what we follow uh, blindly which are actually proved statements so uh, this is uh, this knowledge is uh, also known as shallow knowledge and it follows the principle of thumb rule which is about a previously proved statement and which need to be followed accordingly yeah so it is very efficient in reasoning process as it as it solves the problem based on the records of past problems or the problems which are compiled by experts so as i said it is a thumb rule which is framed by the experts it will follow those procedures and also from, from the previously uh, solved problems and accordingly the solutions can be framed 